I'm Joe Kane. I'm Dan Kane. I'm Sal Conca. And I'm Wayne Heckler. Welcome to the Imperfect Podcast. Be sure to visit us on our website at hecklercane.com or on social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. The links are in the description below. And I'm Wayne Heckler. <laughs> or not. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> So this week was the big opening for Suicide Squad, headed to hit 140 million. What uh, do you guys it was think? The, it was the biggest summer uh, release for Fandango um, in pre-sale tickets. So oh, that's, that's interesting. That's a good thing. Not without its controversy, though. I don't know if you guys heard, but there was a petition going around to shut down Rotten Tomatoes. There's uh, big, apparently in response to bad reviews, Suicide Squad fans are really peeved, telling uh, Rotten Tomatoes that critics movie critics don't know what the hell they're talking about. Yeah, but isn't that the point of of uh, you know Rotten Tomatoes is to give reviews and put them together? It's not even their reviews. They're sitting at a 27% right now on Suicide Squad, so I guess we're going to have to give our opinion after we go see it tonight. Yeah, next next week, next week's podcast will be on the Suicide Squad. So we found out this week that Stan Lee confirmed for a, uh, a cameo in Guardians of the Galaxy 2. That's a big surprise. Oh, yeah. No, he actually, he's probably in the most Marvel... He's probably been in more Marvel movies than any other actor. He's got a cameo in uh, Spider-Man and this one Everything. and that one. So. Is there any movie of any Marvel, mo- Marvel movie he's not been in? Anybody know? Not that I can th- one? guarantee you. A producer is saying head. one. I think the first Guardians of the Galaxy. The first guard. Oh, oh yeah. he wasn't he in the, wasn't first, in the guard. first Guardians of the Galaxy. Maybe that's why this is such big news. There you go. There you go. Yeah. So, welcome to the Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Resident Evil, the final chapter, the teaser trailer was released this week. It features Mila Jovovich, who plays Alice in the upcoming film. Full trailer scheduled to be released on Tuesday, and the film is due out in January of 2017. That's it in this week's news. Interview with the makers of Swivel Shot. The short film. All right, so we're here today with producer Christopher Gladys and actor Rick Ravenello from the uh, independent film Swivel Shot. It's a, uh, a an independent film that features two LAPD police officers at the height of their love, plan to surprise each other with joyful news. Unfortunately, a day that could have been beautiful for both proves to be the most challenging day of their lives. So, Chris, what uh, brought you to make this film? Well, you know, I, I, I wrote a feature film uh, a few years back um, that was about, um, it's called Big Bear. It was about two married special operatives, and they were trying to thwart a uh, terrorist attack in Los Angeles and do it actually in a very unique way. And, you know, looking on the outside of it, you would think that it was, you know, it's just, it, it is an action film and the relationship between um, two people working in very, a very dangerous job that love each other. Um, I don't know if any of you are married, but um, the challenges that that brings just in itself are tremendous. And if you have kids, and then to throw in working at a job that um, potentially you could die every single day, I, something about that just... You know, it kind of piqued my interest, and I started to explore that. The script went around, um, almost got made, and then I was like, you know, I want to do a short. I hadn't done a short film. I hadn't been behind a camera in a while, and I wanted to do a short. And so I'm like immediately living in L.A. I kind of took those two characters and made them um, LAPD officers, easily recognizable, and, um, and really wanted to explore more of the emotional thread than kind of the, the, even though it is a thriller, um, just to, to, to have that emotional thread through there, that's what attracted me. Cool. So Rick, what drew you to the film and have you worked with Chris in the past or, you know, how did you get involved? Uh, well, Chris and I did a movie together a few years back called Dose of Reality. It was myself, uh, Faruza Balk and Ryan Merriman, the three of us in a bar. And uh, I, I had not met Chris prior to that. I, I remember going to an audition a year prior to that film after actually ever being made, um, doing what we do. You walk in, you do your stuff, you go home, and you forget about it. And a year later, I got a call uh, asking, um, basically giving me dates and, and I'm friends since then. So 
that movie, you know, kept us together. And then Chris came to me with Swivel Shot, and and uh, you know, I read it. And I knew it was a short, and I haven't done a lot of shorts, and it was, which is odd because in the last year and a half, I have done a few more shorts because the content sometimes can be stronger. That message to the audience can be stronger than what you know a, a ninety minute on film feature film can actually represent. Sure. What I say and what I ask of every director is like, what do you want your audience to, to walk away from? I had those conversations with Chris, you know, and, and, and you know, we, we both, I think, personally, in my mind anyway, we had different opinions of where to go or whatever. But the cool thing, guys, is that collaboration and swivel shot required a collaboration yeah and I, think, and I think that spoke to a number of different things right i mean that collaboration that you guys had you really did deliver the message home that, that you wanted right it was also just it was shot beautifully and because it is a short you have this opportunity to tell a succinct a succinct message in a very brief period of time as opposed to long 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 um long format films that how many times you see a long movie you know how much filler and fluff and you didn't need that scene in the last 20 minutes could have been cut and you know all, all those types of conversations happen with a long film right well yeah. first of all, I, I think what you guys are endeavoring and what chris endeavored with this is is uh is tougher than you know that full length feature because like you said you've got you know your 14 pages or whatever and you've got 14 minutes or whatever it is and you've got to send a message out there so you know, congrats to you guys for going, you know, and endeavoring in the short film thing. I know it's a stepping stone, you know, to the full-length feature and all that sort of stuff. But Chris has already done the full-length feature, so to come aboard with him on this uh, was really quite amazing. And, and to watch the evolution of it occur as from the day we started meeting with actresses to the day we got on shooting. So, so Rick, anyway, we, know, we know you've been acting a long time. Chris, how long have you been making films? Uh, a long time, I, over you know, fifteen years. Um, so it's it's been you know I, I started out actually writing was my true love, um, and I think it's because um, I tend to be more a little bit more of like I can be by myself very easily, and so the writing thing is is fantastic. Um, doesn't cost you any money except you know you can say time money. Um, but I started out writing and then, um, and then finally I started to get the bug, you know, being on the set in school and, and when I got on, on the set, what you guys were just talking about, the collaboration and, and that just, it was so fun just to be on the set with other people who, you know, are all specializing in different areas, but are also really creative and it just, it just kind of, it just blossomed from there to want to be behind the, to, to be behind the camera as well. Yeah. The, the the importance of collaboration, I'm going to throw this out there to, to either of you. Uh, you know, I, I've worked on both sides. I've been an actor. I've been a director. I've been on both sides. And uh, it, to me, it's absolutely priceless, priceless to be able to collaborate and come up with the ideas. Um, can you give me an instance where the collaboration came through in this film? Absolutely. Um, you know, we, we had um, a moment um, when we were – you know, without getting into actual real specifics, because I don't want to give anything away, but when we were, I think Rick, we were talking about the characters and where they were coming from, and as far as, um, uh, uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to how, to, how to deliver this, with, you guys have seen the film, but without giving anything away, but basically, I had a completely different idea of um, Jacqueline, who plays the female officer, I had a completely different idea of her, her of her kind of background and and what she was going through in this movie. And then Rick, we were just sitting at a table having lunch, and he's like, "Well, what if you know, what if this happened? You know, what if what if we gave her, you know, what if we just flipped that on its head?" And actually, I sat there for a minute, and it's interesting because the first thing that comes usually happens is but your ego will jump up and go, "Well, that's not my idea." Like, yep. you know, I can't let that happen. And then I go, you know, what's the best for the film? And Rick had a great idea, and Jacqueline agreed with it. So, you know, pretty much it was it was something that you might not get by watching the film, but it, it clearly changed Jacqueline's character and how she approached the role. So, you know, and that could be that could be what I just said could be for anything. I mean, um, I've done, I've had situations where people come to me, I they Rick or you know whoever I'm working with didn't like a take. I like the take I just had, but I want to give them the opportunity to, you know, as long as the time is there, as long as we're, it's available and we have light, um, it, it, it's, I think it's tough. As a director, you have to really stand up for what you believe in, but you also have to be 
a traffic cop, a psychologist. Uh, <laughs> you have to have all those things going on at once. And I think if you just ask yourself what is the best for the movie, you can really, you know, it helps out tremendously. But collaboration is absolutely key. Yeah, and it goes back to that, what Rick was saying before, right? Having that core to what you want to deliver to your audience and what's that message. So it's, it's kind of like uh, I have a business background in marketing and, and all that stuff. And a lot of businesses that we run and then looking for their marketing campaigns, we always have this premise where we start with why. And, you know, it's like it's easy to talk about what you do and how you do it and all that stuff, but why are you doing it? You know, really comes to the crux. And that's what we talk about a lot, you know, about projects that we're working on. It's like as really kind of like beginner in, uh, indie filmmakers, a lot of times we're struggling with which projects to, to go with. And we're trying to figure out, well, it's why, the why. It's the why. <laughs> why, do, why are we going to make this project? What's really the point? You know, it, does I, think, it, I think any project that you go into, you have to ask yourself, well, I'm going to invest time in this. I'm going to invest my myself into this this and am I willing to go for the next you know uh, month working on this project the next two months working on this project and where do you go with that and and, and again yeah. why exactly well, so. well guys, let, let, if, if I can interject I, I want to throw something back to you as filmmakers and, and Chris and I have had these conversations as well I mean you know again to what I was saying earlier um are you looking at the message that you're sending out there and how it's resonating with the audience? I mean, you know, ultimately for, for me as an actor and I would think as filmmakers as well, I mean, we need to attach to, to an audience because the audience is what's going to give us the opportunity to go on and make the next film yep. as an actor, as a, as a producer, as a director, you know, so yeah, I love what you're saying about why. Uh, I, I, I think everybody has to ask that very question and say, why am I playing this character? I, I you know, and, and I'm not blowing smoke, whatever, but I turn down, you know, projects that I think maybe I shouldn't turn down sometimes because it might be a paycheck, but I turn down projects because they don't ask why, you know, and it doesn't give me an opportunity to ask why. So now you only got is a sludge that is running around with, what you guys deal with as filmmakers, which is a headache in itself, you know, what are you putting out there? So, um, you know, it's really interesting back to what Chris was saying, and, and I just want to say this. For me, with Swivel Shot, it wasn't putting on a uniform or a costume and becoming a cop. For me, with Swivel Shot, it was, because, it was about being a human being. It was about being this man who was in love with this woman, and, and they happened to have this hurdle in their lives, which happened to be their jobs, and they got in the car together that day and so on and so forth. It, it had nothing to do with the uniform while I, was, while I was making that movie. It had everything to do with the love that I had for this woman and the consequence that we happened to be in because of the uniform. And, and I don't know if actors look at it that way enough. I think we, we put the costume on and we become a character. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. It's about discovering myself within that story. And believe me, guys, we all have a little bit of every script that we read. There's a little bit of something in there that is our own that we can bring to it. Yeah. It is special and nobody else on the planet has. And that's awesome. I mean, it's great to talk to somebody that has such personal integrity, right, that they bring to their roles in their career. I mean, that's that's the goal for all of us. We all want to we all just aspire to do what we love and influence people around us and you know, our uh, in our in our in our sphere. Just come from a place of truth. Yeah. Whether you're writing, whether you're directing, whether you're producing, whether you're especially if you're acting, just come from a place of truth, man and everything falls into place and and that's what i love about chris's writing because it's so raw and it's so you have to think when you read it and and i do a lot of tv and you don't have to think at all i can get i can drink and smoke and do whatever the fuck i want just show up and do the shit and <laughs> nobody really cares but but it's we're, just we're like doing a lot of the reality <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> You know, independence and these shorts, and when you have that that slight time frame, and you have to show up and you have to be set, uh, that's exciting. That's sure. you know, people talk about, oh, you did a short. It's like, fuck you. Of course, I did a short. You couldn't do it. You mm -hmm. couldn't do it. You couldn't bring it to where it has to go. You know, so some of the best work that that that, that I feel proudest about in the last couple of years have been these. These little shorts I go out and do because hey, I got some time. We give back to the community as well, but 
well, that's that's the way I look. You'll find a lot of major actors are going back and doing indie films too, just for the street cred, right? I mean, they're <laughs> they're going a lot of a lot of folks are going back to do indie films because they want the street cred, so to speak, um, for better or worse. I mean, some of them are probably doing it for the right reasons, and some of them are doing it literally because yeah. they think they're going to get the street yeah. cred. Um, the fact that movies get made that actually are finished is mind blowing to me. I mean, you're taking. You know, on a bigger film, you know, on my feature, I don't, you know, we probably have 40, 50 people from beginning to end, maybe, maybe more than that. You have all these people, all different personalities, all different schedules, egos, everything. You know, you have, you're, you're shooting a movie, you're shooting something completely out of order. The actors have to ride these emotional waves and they have to do the end first. It's, it blows my mind that movies even get made. I, I've always said that. I, I think that everyone on this planet should be on a movie set for one day just to see what happens. And most of the time, they're like they're bored to bored to hell, and they're like, you know, is this is this everything? Because when you see a movie that then then you know wins an Academy Award or that collectively everyone's like loves, that is like like you know the hand of God coming down and just blessing the, the whole production because it it, it re, you know you've seen movies nowadays. They have all the best people, all the best actors, and and they end up being crap. So that shows you that even though we have all the best people mm-hmm. involved, it, it could end up like shit. Um, it's yeah. funny. So, our, so our we, podcast last week was inspired by an article on ScreenCraft. I'm sure you guys maybe have seen the website ScreenCraft. And they yeah. they did a blog post called Why Hollywood Makes Bad Movies. And that's what our whole podcast was <laughs> Our whole podcast week. was last week about why Hollywood makes bad movies. Uh, no how problem. long did the whole process take of the uh, – of the filming, uh, for example, what was principal filming? Uh, how long did it take you in uh, pre-production and post-production? Pre-production was fairly quick. I mean, I don't, you know, as far as writing the script, I don't really consider that. I mean, for independent films, you know, you could be writing a script forever, you know. So, sure. and I was, I mean, I'm trying to remember when I first contacted Rick, Rick with the script, but. You know, I would say off the top of my head, it probably was a couple of months, you know, working on the script and that sort of thing. And then I had to start developing a team and I got a producer on board. For sure, you don't really need to, I mean, even a feature, you don't really crew up an independent world until the last minute because you never know. People could be just running off on other on other films. Um, so then once we once we kind of got the, the, the basic mold of what we were going to do, um, the actual, actual, the shoot was three days. Um, we, we, we originally were thinking about maybe four days, but um, you know, it's one of those things. If I had a week, I still would ask. I still would have been like, man, I wish I would have had eight days. Yeah, you know? of course. Um, and so I kind of liked having that little pressure of of shooting it a little quicker and, not, and, and saving a little bit of money and maybe putting it more of it to post. Um, Post, we ran a little long. I tend to get kind of crazy and anal in the editing room, and so I just take I just take my time. And so um, I think probably a couple months there too. But for sure, that's a pretty extensive period of time. And we were taking breaks and stuff like that as well. Um, it wasn't your full time gig, so I mean, obviously that wasn't. No, no, no. no. I mean, what I do know is is the I think you know we. We didn't even really. We maybe we, we. I don't think we rehearsed, Rick. We didn't rehearse. We just had like a couple. We just had some talks about it because I don't like to. If we're going to rehearse, we'll do it a little bit. I don't want to rule. I want. I want that energy to be there for the set. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was three long days, and we were you know right up to the last minute on the third day. Like losing light and you know all that sort of thing. So, so I think our uh, our film geeks will probably want some more technical stuff. So Chris, yeah. what do you what do you yeah. shoot? What do you shoot on? What do, what did you shoot on for this film? That we should use the Alexa. It was the first time I've used the Alexa, which is an unbelievable. It was funny when I was interviewing D, uh, DPs. Um, you know, they all said we want the Alexa. Obviously, it's the camera nowadays. And what we didn't just what we didn't say is that when we were riding around, you know, um, uh, South Central with this with this LAPD car, you know, we had a two hundred fifty thousand dollar camera hanging out the window and. You know, usually you're being pulled. So, you know, Rick's on the left side of the car, and, and you know, that thing comes out, you know, a pretty good distance. So I was, like, just praying that, you know, we didn't clip anything. Um, so we used the Alexa. Um, uh, Paula Hidobro, who's an unbelievable cinematographer, she's worked with, um, uh, um, uh, I'm trying to remember his name, um, uh, Badlands and... Um, 
I'll remember in a minute. But uh, I liked, I really wanted to go with like a real kind of, um, uh, a real grounded reality feel, like being right there with everyone. And, and I, I look at the film now and I'm actually, thought, oh, Terrence Malick, that, that's the director she's worked with, um, second unit. And I almost said that it looks almost too beautiful. I, I could have used it looking a little bit more rough. Um, the shot so that's amazing. Me. The shot, I like in, cinematography wise, I was I was totally blown away. For a lot of these indie films that are like at this level, you're not seeing something of that high of a quality like coming out of an Alexia, as you were saying. Right. You know, right. I, I was looking at this. I was I was really I, I, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. It was a shot. beautiful picture being painted. So I'm which is know. a great which is a great irony to the grit of the story. Like uh, to me, a little bit. You know, you have this beauty because it lures you in. The beauty of this the, the cinematography like. It, it it makes you feel safe in some regards when you're watching it and then as the story unfolds you know you really you know we all know how it unfolds so you know it's it, it's great I, I i love the way it was shot so well it's interesting also um the, the thing i i you know i look at like cameras and equipment every day the, the equipment is only as good as the people behind it i mean you can have an alexa and it'll look like crap, you know. I mean, it all. You have to have the people who. You know, that's why I. Even if it costs me a little bit more money that probably I don't have, I'm like I need to have these people surrounding me. And that goes back to the collaboration thing. You know, I, I can't. I mean, I, I know how to operate a camera, but mm -hmm. I don't know if I could get an image like that. You know. Can we ask what was the budget for a film like this? Oh God, I'm trying to remember now after post. Um, I think it was somewhere around 25, maybe it was probably more than that. Mm -hmm. Somewhere in that zone. Yeah, okay. I mean that's great. I mean, it, you know, for the type of quality that you guys had and the that type of budget. I mean, you know, I mean it's it, with with a lot of filmmakers going with Indiegogo and and other things. I mean that's that's an attainable number to be able to film something very professional, right? And shoot, shoot something that can tell a real story. I think a lot of people, I think independent filmmakers, sometimes I think they think they need much bigger budgets to make of yeah. something that looks like this. And the reality is you, you, you may not. And a lot of times they can't get it because of the, the, you're looking at a budget and going, looking at something like this, like a 14 minute short and going, I need X amount of money to get that. And you're going, I need, you know, 5 million. It's not going to happen. No, but, yeah, but, but that's, that's when, that's when you put, you know, you put your, brain cells together and you put your thinking caps on and I mean you you can go out and you can shoot your shorts for I mean I I know they're shooting them for five inside of ten yeah and they're looking oh, yeah. but that you know people always ask about the relationships in the industry I mean I'm, I'm blessed that I have a relationship with Chris Gladys right now that you know I'm Chris gonna go off and make another film one day and whatever and you know we have that connect we, we understand each other as far as where I am in front of the camera where is where he is behind the camera and we put that in our little tool chest of of, of relations we have in the, in the business and you know I've gone two three years where I've not talked or collaborated with that director or that writer in the past and then the phone rings or nowadays with social media and you get that call you know the, the most important thing of what we do is maintaining and nurturing the relationships that we have in this business. So now we're back down to, to shooting short films that really resonate and make a difference. I mean, look at, you know, 25, 20, I mean, 5, 10. I mean, it, it all comes to your locations, you know, the, the, the crew that, you know, when I go to work, my crew is the most important part of everything I do. It's not my director and producer. Sorry, guys, but it's the truth. My crew is that, I mean, that's the group. And guess what? I see those guys time and time and time again. And also, guess what? Those guys are moving on. Have you ever seen a first AD who wants to remain being a first AD? That guy wants to direct. And then the phone rings and he's directing. He says, hey, man, you know what? You got to come do this with me. It's all about relationships. And then those numbers that we get to make those, whether it's a short or a full-length feature, indie, whatever, they start dropping because we got those people, you know, that want to come and want to work with you and you want to work with them. And, you know, so we collaborate again back to that question earlier and we make great films. And, you know, Dose of Reality was one of them. Uh, and also digital. I mean, you know, oh. digital now has changed everything. I mean, I, when I first started, when I first started, it was film. And, and I, you know, I've been shooting um, a couple documentaries. I went out and bought a camera and I'm a one man band. I mean, I'm doing everything. I'm, I'm operating a camera. I'm, shooting sound on the camera and did, I mean the documentary cinema verite style is easier with that but I can't you know I'm pretty sure I could probably shoot a short using you know I have a C100 it's a beautiful camera I mean the images are beautiful 
it's not Alexa, but you get a, you get a, um, you know, I have a Ninja that I run it through. It's basically a C300, you know, and, and the images are, are beautiful. And so, you know, you can, you can do things and you just buy the camera. You don't rent it because by the time you finish renting it, you're going to spend more for, you know, you're going to spend more than you than buying the camera. So what, um, what's next for swivel shot? I mean, has it already been in festival or are you guys waiting yeah. or? We were at CineQuest up in uh, uh, San Jose, which is really, um, I had Dose of Reality there too. It's a great festival. We had a blast up there. Had, uh, uh, you know, here's the thing. With shorts and film festivals, it's kind of tough because depending on where you're placed, like you could be in a pack of short films, and if you're in the middle, you know, your, your film, the features are really what everyone wants to, wants to see. Now, I'm generalizing, obviously, because, you know, films that, there's short films at some of the bigger festivals that go on to become features and all sorts of things. Um, but it, 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 so I guess what I'm saying is it's, it's, it's great, but you have, what, 100, 200 people see your film, or now, again, online, with the way things are going, things can catch on and go viral online, you know, very, very quickly. Now, we are online now. I've got a couple festivals that I'm waiting to hear back from. Um, even festivals now are okay if the film is online because they know that people are releasing, they're, they're not going to wait, yeah. you know? Um, so I'm waiting to hear back from a couple more. Um, and yeah, we're just, just seeing how the, how the response comes in through the, uh, online websites. I just want to commend you guys for going out and doing the independent thing because as an actor, when I see an independent, I get excited. You know, and and, uh, and that goes back, and that really started with Chris and Dose of Reality because we don't look at independence as really paying the bills. They don't. No, it's yeah. not. You know, but but you go out and do them, and what's am- what's amazing about having had the opportunity to do Dose with Chris, it became this little thing that started to pay the bills because he allowed me an opportunity to go out and go to this place and play this character that I had never been offered before and it and it and it and it's chris i'm not paying you commission on this but <laughs> it went off and people watch that and they go wow that fat chunky looking guy that lives in palm springs can actually you know do this stuff so we're gonna hire him so you know i think actors are stupid to to you know to turn down things just because of the paycheck although it is a job for all of us we all want to make money but back to the collaboration you know if we come together we put a great product out there and we all understand what we're trying to do and we can reach those audiences, we will make the money, guys. And don't ever tell yourself it's not about the money because the money gives us the freedom to go out and to act and to produce and to mm-hmm. direct. Yeah, well, we, we really appreciate you guys' time. I mean, for us, as much as you know, we have this podcast as a forum for independent filmmakers and actors like yourselves, as well as indie musicians. So, you know, it's really a treat for us to meet two great guys like you. I think this yeah. is, we're really enjoying this and, you know, we see we're, it as... We're a, looking forward to that. Yeah, to, to it, meeting you. It, it's, it's educational for us as well. So uh, on the selfish side of things, you know, we learned a lot from this as well. So and we hope hopefully our audiences will will. will as well so and just keep getting the word out man I, it's good to see that the that, that guys are, are, are you know getting i mean this is helpful you're giving this out for free to people and i think it's really cool to uh to inspire other people uh thank you to rick and chris for sticking around and talking with us uh t- if you haven't checked it out yet check out swivel shot we'll have a link below uh and that's it for the imperfect podcast thank you guys very much take care guys bye, bye guys Pat, it's great to meet y'all. We'll talk to y'all soon. Take care. Bye. All right. Bye.